Today on Joe's Geek Show, we're going to be talking about Justice League Last Ride, issue number four. What's going on and welcome to Joe's Geek Show, the video series where we talk comics. And before we get started, if you're new and like to support the channel, you can do so by hitting that like button, clicking that subscribe button, and sharing. And with that, the plot thickens as we are now down to just two more issues of this mini-series right after this. Written by Chip Zdarsky with art by Miguel Madonka, colors by Enrica Angiolini, and letters by Inworld Design. And this book begins in the past with Martian Manhunter attempting to stave off both the Parademons and Calabac while Batman tries to shut down Darkseid's boom nukes. However, this proves to be impossible, and the power supply would need to be cut instead. And with Wonder Woman injured and Superman on Oa battling Darkseid, Martian Manhunter decides he will be the one, but knows that the intense heat will kill him. Superman hears this on the comms and attempts to race to Apocalypse, but it is too late. Martian Manhunter succeeds, but at the cost of his own life. The book then picks back up in the present with Wonder Woman and Jon Stewart fighting the fleet of ships, Batman and Hal heading towards Darkseid's power room, and Superman and the Flash watch over Lobo, who confesses that he did not in fact kill the new gods, but his employer did. The book then begins to wrap up with the reveal that the Space Armada is being led by Mongol, and both Superman and the Flash catch themselves staring down the oncoming onslaught of an army of Manhunters led by Brainiac in the body of Cyborg Superman. And holy sh that was intense. First off, we finally got to see what happened to Martian Manhunter since the first issue and knowing that he died. It's just been eating at me, just knocking at the back of my skull what exactly happened. And I gotta admit, I was not prepared for it to go down the way it did because, oh man, I felt that sacrifice. All of these different feelings and emotions just rushed over me as he's all like getting ready to open up the door to the nukes as the fire starting to hit him and you got Superman screaming no as he's all like goodbye my friends we always knew this was part of the gig and I'm just like ah, what are you doing you're making me feel things and what's great is now we have context to everything, including Batman's own guilt. Because he is the world's greatest detective, he's a fantastic strategist and stuff like that. When he puts all of the Justice League and different little teams, it's strategic. He knows what he's doing. But there's just one tiny problem. Batman is still human, and he's prone to mistakes. Because here in the 11th hour of this big war between Darkseid and Slash Apocalypse and the Justice League, did Batman realizes he probably should have had Superman with him instead. Because Superman was on Oa fighting Darkseid with Green Lantern. I mean, personally, I don't know exactly why he wouldn't have just done that in the first place, considering that Apocalypse has, like, fire just shooting out of all sides of the planet. But then again, that was the point. It was an oversight on his part. And here we have Superman who actually realizes this as he's screaming Bruce to stop John Jones from doing this. That's why Superman is mad at Batman because he didn't think about it beforehand and was just so ready and willing to let Martian Manhunter go off and do what he did. We also have Lobo admitting that he wasn't the one that actually killed the new gods, which then begs the question, who did? And then we get hit with both Mongol and a Brainiac look confused cyborg Superman seemingly leading the charge slash assault on Apocalypse. The question is, can Batman get Apocalypse's defenses up in time? So I'm definitely expecting issue number five to be a giant big all out brawl, which we kind of got the beginning of here as Wonder Woman and Jon Stewart are in space just trying to fight off all of the ships coming in. And I really like that one line from Diana where she tells John, let's show them that the Justice League does not bluff. Ears bleeding, that's so cool. When it comes to the art, it's once again very impressive with a lot of very dramatic imagery here. Again, bringing up the scene where Martian Manhunter does die as he's 
just opening up those doors and you just see the flames hitting him. And even just a few panels above that, that shot of Superman flying towards the reader, just screaming, no, you know, don't do this. You almost don't really need any of the text or dialogue in that particular panel because you can just see all of the emotion on Superman's face. I find the colors to also be very good here as even since the first issue, there's this bit of vibrancy to all of the panels, even ones taking place in space. They're not all just like flat black. There's some blues, some purples, and pinks. If I really had to criticize anything artistic wise in this book, it mainly would have to do with Calabac's design. Because for the Son of Dark Side, I'm used to him being just a bit huskier, you know, having just a really large head and giant, you know, arms and legs. Sort of this primitive Neanderthal type of look. Cranked up to 11. Whereas here, he's still very large, don't get me wrong but he's a lot more proportional. And I mean that within the context of his own body, you know, he doesn't have that massive head or anything. Just a preferential nitpick, but the art is still sound. And with that, I'm gonna score Justice League Last Ride, issue number four, a nine out of 10. So Justice League Last Ride, issue number four. What'd you think about this book? If you've read it, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you liked this video, I'd love it if you'd smash that like button, share it with some friends, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and ring that notification bell for more comic book content. And if you're wondering what to watch next, consider one of these two videos. Alright, take care, have a great day, and as always, stay geeky.